And our next speakers come from the University of Pittsburgh. The authors of the paper are Victor Yu, or Victor Yu Borovko, Vladimir Kovalchuk, and Julie Dietry. The title of the presentation is On the Carbine Mechanism of the Hydrodechlorination of General Dichlorofluorocarbon. And our speaker will be Vladimir Kovalchuk. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to talk today about a mechanism, carbine, carbine mechanism of the hydro dechlorination of geminal dichlorofluorocarbons. Um, chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs have been extensively used since their discovery in the 30s, mainly as refrigerants for blowing agent or solvents because they are inert and non-toxic. However, CFCs were found to be responsible for ozone layer depletion and worldwide production and consumption of new CFCs are germinated. Fortunately, uh, hydrofluorocarbon or HFCs are good substitute for CFCs and in refrigerant applications. And the hydro declarination of CFCs catalyzed by palladium is a widely investigated route to form HCFC. In addition, this process can be used for destruction of uh, CFCs that are in use or stored. There are many chemical kinetics investigations of CFCs hydrodeclination to form HCFCs, but mechanistic studies are lacking. Thus, uh, for example, for CF3, CFCL2 hydrodeclination, the following uh, scheme was proposed based on kinetic results. And um, fluoro, trifluoromethyl carbene was suggested to be the key reaction intermediate and its surface reaction result in main uh, hydro dechlorination products. Similar scheme again based on kinetics investigation was proposed for CF2Cl2 hydro dechlorination. Again, surface Dichlorocarbene species was suggested to be reaction intermediate, and transformation of this intermediate results in uh, main reaction products, which are okay, CH2F2 and methyl. Nevertheless, the carbene species have not been experimentally detected for palladium. Thus, the objectives of the present investigation was the experimental verification of the hypothesis that carbene species are the reaction intermediate of geminal dichlorofluorocarbon hydrodeclorination. To accomplish the goal specified, the following experimental approach was used. First, A catalyst wafer made of uh, palladium supported um, alumina was allowed to react with gaseous CFCs under condition maximizing uh, surface concentration 
uh, maximize the concentration of adsorbed species. Uh, the interaction of the CFC with uh, catalyst wafer was monitored by FTIR. And dynamics of band intensity change allows distinguishing between bands belonging to different adsorbed species. And then uh, surface species were hydrogenated with hydrogen and uh, gaseous reaction products were, were identified and all of this information was used to identify for identification of adsorbed species. Short contact time of CF3, CFCl2 with the catalyst wafer at ambient temperature results in the spectrum shown with this transparency with uh, intense band and 12, 28 wave numbers, two less intense band and 1160 and 1188 wave numbers, and the low intense band and uh, 1065 wave numbers. Prolonged contact time of same molecule with the same catalyst wafer resulted in different spectra, which uh, consists of quite intense band and 1232 wave numbers. And uh, to show this in this area, one is at approximately 1218 wave numbers, and the second approximately at 121190 uh, wave numbers. And again, intense band and 1077 and show the uh, 1160 and less intense band and 1180. Just simple comparison between this spectrum and previous one allows to conclude that there are several pathways for CFC interaction with palladium wave. And those different pathways result in the formation of different adsorbed species. Analysis of dynamics of the band intensity change with contact time and that of uh, during thermal decomposition of adsorbed species allowed to conclude that spectrum shown in this transparency, the same spectrum spectrum as I showed in the previous transparency, this spectrum consists of three surface species. Species one uh, has um, two different CF vibration modes, one at 1233 wave numbers and uh, two others in the range of 1200, 1190 and 1077, 1065 wave numbers. Species two has only one CF vibrational mode in the range of 1190, 1188 and species three has two CF vibrational mode, modes at 1228, 1218 and 1165, 1160. Actually, uh, band position, positions vary from experiment to experiment because they depend on contact time. That's why I showed uh, intervals of frequencies rather than exact band positions. No bands in the region of CCL vibrations were detected and, and thus the following surface species are hypothesized. Information of the following surface species are hypothesized. Uh, species A forms via dissociation of CCL bonds. Uh, species C forms via dissociations of all C halogen bonds at alpha carbon atom. And uh, Formation of species B requires this, uh, cleavage of CCL, CC bonds of the parent CFC molecule. And the question now, how to identify these species? In other words, how to make proper assignment of the band in, in infrared spectra to 
okay, how to make it, how to make the proper assignment of the bands in the right spectrum. And the simplest way is to hydrogenate these species and then look at gas phase products and try to make a link between uh, decaying band, some bands in the spectra and uh, increasing bands in gas phase. This approach would work, however, only if rate, if, if this species hydrogenate with different rates. If they hydrogenate with the same rate, actually we would observe gradual uh, decrease in concentrations of all bands in the infrared spectrum and uh, gradual increase of concentration uh, of several gas phase products. And uh, no link between particular bands of a suspicious and gas phase products would be obtained, may, may be obtained. Uh, however, this complication uh, can be overcome by two different ways. One of them is to synthesize surface species by the way which is unambiguously leads to the formation of the target species. The second approach is uh, uh, to find conditions favoring predominant formation of only one particular species, and both two of these approaches were employed. Let's start from the species C. One can suggest the interaction of 111 trifloral atom with palladium surface would result in the species C, would result in trifloral tetridine because CCL bonds are bigger than CCL bonds, and of course they will dissociate first. And again, dissociation of CCL bond can be monitored by infrared spectroscopy. Um, indeed, interaction, interaction of CF3, CCL3 with the catalyst wafer results in the spectrum shown with transparency. This uh, two bands at 12.7 and 11.65 wave numbers. And we see these two bands are in the region of species 3. Actually, previous spectrum is similar to this one, which was obtained after short contact time of CF3, CFCL2 with the catalyst wafer. You see again, uh, 1228 and 1160, uh, same band which uh, we observed in the previous spectrum. However, these two bands uh, suggest that uh, some other species still are still uh, on the surface. Let's go back to adsorption of C3CCL3. Again, I have shown the top spectrum and the hydrogenation of species obtained after interaction of CF3CCL3 with catalyst surface uh, results in decreasing the intensity of all, well, both bands, and at the same time, the CF3CH3 was detected in gas phase. In bottom spectrum, in this transparency, was obtained uh, resulting from uh, interaction of CF3, CFCL2 with the catalyst wafer. And a uh, spe middle spectrum is obtained after hydrogenation of surface species. Actually, you can see that uh, this spectrum have bent at 12. 85, and I will discuss the relation of this band a bit later. But again, in this phase, CF3, CH3 was detected. Um, now we can identify species 3. 
and species three is trifloro ethridine that bends in the region of in the range of 1228, 1218, and 1165, 1160, belonging to symmetric and asymmetric vibration of CF3 group respectively. The top spectrum in this transparency was obtained after interaction of CF3, CF, CL2 with the catalyst wafer under conditions favoring formation of species 1. And here we can just conclude that uh, species 1 is the dominant species on the surface uh, based on intense infrared band in 1232 and uh, 1075 were numbers. But again, show that 1165 and 1188 uh, provides the evidence that other species uh, are present on the surface. And uh, hydrogenation of these species result in medium spectrum with bands at 1200, 1290 grain numbers and shoulder at 1220 grain numbers. And the evacuation of the catalyst wafer after hydrogenation results in disappearance of all these bands. Same result was obtained after heating the catalyst wafer to 100 degree C. And after heating, CF3, CF H2 was detected in gas phase. And the bottom spectrum in this transparency was obtained after exposure of the catalyst wafer to 3 milliliter of CF3, CFH2. And you see, this spectrum is essentially the same as spectrum in the middle. Now we can say that species 1 it is fluoro trifluoromethyl carbene that bends at 1232 and uh, 1211 90. The numbers belong to symmetric and asymmetric vibrations of C F3 group respectively and bent at 1075. 1065 the numbers is a CF vibration at alpha carbon atom. Let's now return to the, to the spectrum I already showed. Um, and discuss the origin of this band. Actually, previous result on adsorption of CF3, CFH2 on the catalyst wafer. Um, led to emerging of band at 1280, which is the same band as this band at 1285 in the experimental era. And now we can say that this band formed by hydrogenation of species 1, which is still present in um, this spectrum in relatively low concentration. Species two is species two also hydrogenates. However, it always present in very low concentration, and we were unable to detect gaseous products of its hydrogenation. However, the answer to the question shown in the transparency is most likely no. We haven't looked at the interaction of CF3I with our catalyst, palladium sulfuric to 
again obtained 30 CF3 species, by the way, uh, which cannot be doubted. However, uh, interaction of CF3I with palladium, supporting a different support, aluminum fluoride, results in uh, two bands at 1026 and show well, main band at 1026 and show that uh, 1044. Uh, and you can see that difference between these bands and species 2 bands is more than 150 magnamis. And in my opinion, this species and species 2 cannot be said. Species 2 may be trifluoroethylidine except on steps of metallic uh, crystallites and it can form from a species no, from fluoro trifluoromethylcarbene uh, occupying edges of metal particles and in this case Band at 1190 is assigned to asymmetric stretching vibration of CF3 group. And the absence of symmetric vibration is explained by metal surface selection rules. According to this selection rule, uh, the only infrared active vibrational modes are those that have a component of their, their oscillating dipole momentum perpendicular to the metal surface. And one can see that a symmetric vibration of T of CF3 group has dipole momentum, oscillating dipole momentum parallel to the surface. That's why this vibration is infrared connected. Uh, we also made an attempt to detect surface species resulting from interaction of CF2Br2 or CF2Cl2 with palladium supported on aluminum. However, uh, we We are not able to do that. Actually, you no know, a subspecies containing CF bonds was detected by FTII after exposure of the catalyst uh, to 510 tor of CF2Cl2 or CF2Pr2 in the temperature range of uh, 20 to 100 degrees C. And uh, the question arises why? It cannot be because of low concentration of dichlorocarbenes on the surface, because CBR bonds in uh, CF2Br2 molecules are weaker than C CL bonds in uh, dichloro tetrafluoroethane. However, we detected surface species resulting from the direction of dichloro tetrafluoroethane with palladium surface, and we did not detect CF2 species for CF2Br2. And uh, one possibility is that adsorbed CF2 species is linear. In this case, both symmetrical and asymmetrical vibrations will be infrared inactive because of metal surface selection rule. And conclusions. Flora, trifluoro, methyl, carbene, and trifluoro, ethyl, dime are shown to be the reaction intermediate of dichloro, tetrafluoro, ethyl, hydrochlorination to form uh, CF3, CFH2, and CF3, CH respectively. 
and no direct evidence has been obtained for the existence of a sort of trifluorocarbene species, probably because of its linear geometry. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge financial support from National Science Foundation. Thank you for your attention. Actually, I was also very <laughs> quick. <laughs> thank you. Let's thank you. We also have plenty of questions here, so if anyone. Well, I have one for you, too. Okay. <laughs> Has something like that linear mm -hmm. difluorocarbene been observed ever? I mean, you can't see it because okay. of my vibration. It was observed uh, for platinum. And apparently, um, platinum doesn't have linear structure because structure of the species depends actually on, you know, on, on, on type of the surface. Yeah. It can be either linear or, or not linear. And uh, actually, linear and non-linear carbon species have different uh, electronic configuration, and uh, different surfaces uh, can stabilize uh, those different electronic configurations to a different extent. That's why one surfaces uh, on one surfaces. It, it is linear, it can be linear, on other surfaces it is not linear, on platinum it is not linear. Anyway, this research is in progress and we are hoping to get uh, more maybe proofs for existence for uh, this linear structure. Yes. The free bond that you cover up on the surface linked with the free bond? Yes. I, I'm sure you have a simple wider so you can say. Is this the triple bond formed one bond for the second and then stay and another bond so or it formed simultaneously somehow on the same time? How does it form? Um, okay, I'm not my, let me tell you why. My triple bond is a three body or four body or five body chemical reaction. That's very un Really? Okay, my uh, answer is I don't know for sure, but okay, structures like that are well known for literature because it's really time uh, has same structure. It are flowing when, when uh, hydrogen is instead of flowing there. And um, uh, actually, are you asking if they cleave, I mean, CCL won't cleave in turn or simultaneously? Yeah, or I go by three steps. Uh -huh. get there. No, okay, again, I don't know, but um, Professor Fabio Ribeiro will be giving talk at the RT tomorrow. And uh, based on uh, his isotope experiments, he found out that for dichloro, tetrafluoro, I think, uh, it, dissociation of two C cell bonds forms in turn, one first and second after that. And actually, it, it is also a subject of uh, uh, of future investigation. Yeah. Uh, do you see any uh, absorption on this report? Um, because chlorine absorbs aluminum pretty easily. We cannot absorb uh, CFC at sort on support, but we were able to judge that it physical substance support just by uh, <coughs> shape of uh, OH band in the frame spectrum. It influences um, OH absorption of uh, CFC on support. But apparently, the assistition coefficients are low, and again, maybe coverage is low for physical soft CFC. In the past, we did a lot of research on the hard numbers of CFC uh, 12, and then we find out that the active species of the catalyst was related to carbide. Do you think that that changed your picture on the absorption? Um, it's an excellent question. And again, I cannot say that I have a good answer, but it may. Okay, actually, uh, anyway, CCL bonds dissociate on the metal surface, and carbide would uh, modify 
electronically relating to surface. And uh, I would not expect that pre uh, presence of uh, bulk palladium carbide phase um, will change significantly whole picture. But it may influence rates. It may influence just, you know, okay, uh, I mean, not on total rate, it may influence uh, relative rates of different species formation. As you could see, uh, we were not able to obtain 100% of one particular species. It was always a mixture, even though one species was dominated in that mixture. HCL is a product, right? HCL, yes. Yes. If you use karma alumina, it might show up alumina. Yes, that's right. Actually, the, uh, the model, not HCL, CFC interacts with alumina to form uh, aluminum flora. Yeah. And uh, we just hold, okay, this model system anyway. Of course, nobody would use this uh, catalyst uh, for industrial process. Well, you can spot on carbon. Hmm? You, you can spot on carbon and they only show up. If you spot on platinum, yes, 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 sure. Yes, carbon is much, right. uh, actually, that's really not support, it's much better. Right. Right. But right. the problem is. The problem is if carbon. Right. Works. <laughs> carbon absorbs everything, yes, and it's very difficult to uh, yeah, yeah. study, to investigate <laughs> carbon superfluids by infrared. Thank you, Mr. Colleague Black, because we show also that the behavior of lack of palladium of uh, palladium carbon. Black has a drawback because it has very low uh, surface area, and, uh, and uh, actually, sensitivity may be not high enough to uh, detect surface species. But actually, we, we would try. Yes, it's a nice idea. Okay, well thank you very much.